Hi all, welcome back to the Crazy Small CPU video series. In the last video we looked at the um, tools like the assembler and the simulators to uh, look at the software side of things so that uh, once you've built your CPU or you want to use a simulator you can write some programs in assembly language and convert them into machine code and then run them. In this, uh, in this video I'm going to look at the compiler. Now if you think that by looking at this compiler you'll learn how compilers work I'd have to say straight away this is not the compiler you should be looking at. Firstly it's written in Perl um, which is not the best language to be looking at. Um, it's not doing a proper parse it's doing it line by line and it's using regular expressions to recognize each line. So if you there are so many other better compilers out there that you should be looking at. So uh, instead of actually looking at how the compiler, and by the way, CLC is the compiler. Rather than looking at how CLC does its job, what I'm going to do is write a program in the high level language, uh, compile it, and show you what sort of uh, assembly language output it creates. So we're going to start with a very simple program um, which has a main function. So the language is very like C but cut down. And we've got variables. And in this language, variables are 8-bit signed variables. Now, of course, remember that the crazy small CPU is a 4-bit CPU. So we're going to have to actually store this in two 4-bit memory locations. So we'll have a low nibble and a high nibble. So the program simply declares a variable, gives it a value, and then we're going to exit. And of course, both in the simulator and real hardware, we can't exit. But what we do is we'll go into an infinite loop uh, to simulate the exit. So let's actually go over and compile this. Um, and by the way, .cl on the end, I'm not sure if whether that means uh, compiled language or crazy language, uh, doesn't really matter. All right, let's have a look at what machine code comes out, what assembly machine code comes out so far. Now, right at the beginning, there's a bit to do with um, the caller because uh, main is a function. So I'm going to ignore the stuff to do with calling uh, main and I'm also going to skip the bit at the end that deals with returning back to the caller. I'm just mainly concentrating on declaring a variable, assigning a value to the variable and uh, exiting. Okay, so we need to declare row. We are going to have a nibble called row high and a nibble called row low. And to make this a local variable, uh, it's preceded with main dot. So main.row high is going to live in memory location 1, main.row low is in memory location 2, and we want to do uh, row equals 10. Well, that basically means for the high nibble we need to set it to 0, and for the low nibble we need to set it to 10. So we can load a constant into the A register, store it in into row low, and that's the end of the program. So when we get to exit, that will be translated to an infinite loop. Right, okay, so let's go back and make some changes to this program. I'm going to add another variable called col, and I'm going to go from one up to row with the col variable. So I'm going to say col equals one, while col is less than or equal to row, and I'm going to print out an asterisk and if I can spell it right okay so now we've got a loop well, we've got a, a, an assignment statement which we just looked at but this time we've got a while loop now we want to loop while col is less than or equal to row and of course mostly compilers will translate this to be the opposite so when col becomes bigger than row we are going to break out of the loop and otherwise we'll fall into the loop and at the bottom of the loop we'll jump back to the top of the loop. And again, generally, if you are lucky to have a computer where you can actually compare two things directly, uh, then you can do the comparison and find out whether they are uh, one's greater than the other. Uh, but we can't do that with the crazy small CPU because we can only really tell whether something is negative, zero, um, or po positive uh, when neither of those are true. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do row minus col on this side and we'll do col minus col on this side so we'll be seeing whether row minus col is bigger than or equal to zero and if that's true we'll keep going in the loop but on the other hand if we do row minus col 
and find out that the answer is less than zero, in other words, the negative flag is on, then we'll exit, I will break out of the loop and come down to the exit. All right, so let's compile that. And let's have a look at the result. Okay, so you can see now we've got L0 at the top of our loop. Again, oh, by the way, we've got to make sure we set our coal to one. So we zero the high nibble of coal and we set the low nibble to one. Okay, so here's the loop. Uh, we're going to do row low minus coal low. So we're going to subtract row low, a coal low from row low. Now we actually don't really care about what the result is, but we're doing that so that if there is an underflow, uh, then when we go and do the high nibble, uh, row high, take away coal high, and do the subtraction, if we get a negative number, then we know coal was too big, it wasn't equal to row, in fact it was bigger than row, and so therefore we've got a number which is less than zero, and we should leave the loop and fall out to our exit statement. All right, so all of this here is just to test whether or not coal is too big, and if it is, we'll leave the loop and go on to the next part of our code. Once we fall into the loop, we want to do put char asterisk, so therefore we just have to load into the A and B registers the upper nibble and the lower nibble of an asterisk, and we can dab it to display uh, that as an ASCII character, and we're going to jump back up to L0. All right, so there's our program. I might just change the size of the windows while we're here, just to make it a bit easier for us. Okay, um, what I really might do now, of course, printing out stars in a row is all fine and good, but I might actually also just quickly put in a new line at the end. And let's recompile that. Just so that when we get out, um, once we leave the loop, so when we leave the loop, we get down to L1, we're going to print out uh, ASCII 10, which is the new line, and then we're going to go into an infinite loop. So let's actually run this. So let's actually, oh, we've got to uh, assemble it as well. So we've got triangle.s, we've got to assemble that. And, oh, I forgot to make alu.rom, let's make that. Oh, and I've done something wrong, what have I done? Ah, oh, you know what I've done wrong? I forgot to do plus plus, of course. Uh, we've got to, I keep thinking it's a for loop, but it's not a for loop. So we're going to need to also put uh, col plus plus in here. You can tell this is definitely not scripted. All right, let's see how that gets translated. All right, so how do we do col plus plus? Well, that's pretty easy. We take the low nibble into the A register. We run the SMIA increment and put it back in memory at col low. Of course, that might overflow. We might have f going back to zero. So, if it did overflow and we had a carry, sorry, if we did have a carry, and we've, we will come down to this two-dimensional thread, and we'll load the high nibble, and of course, we'll increment the high nibble as well. So now, once we've done the plus plus, we can loop back to the top of the loop. All right, so we better uh, assemble that again. And now we can run it in the simulator, and we get our ten asterisks. All right, so of course, um, the name of the program is triangle, so we actually do want a, uh, a triangle. So let's quickly go back and change this to row is equal to one. And I'm gonna borrow this loop and say, while row is less than, let's make it 15. And come down, and now I've better indent all of this, otherwise you'll get angry. All right, so that looks much better. Okay, so row starts at row one. Uh, we're gonna go up to 15 rows, and I better also remember to put in the row plus plus. I wait, was waiting for someone to tell me that. All right, um, we're going to go from one to 15 with row plus plus at the bottom to move up to the next row. And on every row, we'll start at column one. And while column is not equal to the row less than that row, we'll put out an asterisk. So row one should be one asterisk, uh, row two should be two, Row three should be three. All right, let's just uh, compile that and quickly have a look and see what we've got. Okay, so now we've got uh, two loops. Uh, we've got an outside loop, L0 and L1, and we've got an inside loop, L2 and L3. 
and of course all in the middle of that we've got our asterisk printing we've got our plus plus on col when we fall out of the inside loop we'll get down to l3 we'll print out the new line and then we'll increment uh, the row counter and we'll jump back to the top of the outside loop and finally we'll get out of the outside loop and we'll simply exit uh, we'll do our infinite loop all right so let's assemble that and let's run that and hey presto so the program on the left now is compiled down to something which will run in the crazy small CPU and with a, a bit of translation not the best compiler in the world we now have a working machine code program that we can put in all right what I want to try and do now given that we've just compiled a high-level uh, program into uh, assembly language we've just translated the assembly language down into machine code I should have um, the ALU image, the um, address ROM image, and the control ROM image uh, all ready to uh, go. I've done the simulation, I know that the program works. As a final step, let's actually bring it over into the crazy small CPU real breadboard version and try it out. So, what I'm going to do is take out the address ROM, put it into my ROM programmer, and Uh, write it out to the ROM and that looked like it worked. Take it back over into the CPU. Do the same thing with the control ROM. And of course that's now the top one. Right, excellent. Pop that back in over on to the breadboard. Move that down and hopefully if I now plug this into a spare USB port which I think I've got one down here let me just set, uh, hold down the reset line so I don't um, run the program by itself oh, I better actually launch MiniPro somewhere in here no Minicom okay off we go fingers crossed um, Excellent, it is doing something. I don't know why the LED isn't showing up. Let's speed up the CPU just a little bit. Fantastic. So apart from the fact that the clock LED isn't working, uh, everything else is working. Um, it looks very pretty and eventually we'll get into an infinite loop down the bottom here uh, there we go uh, and we've got to the end of the program excellent so high level language to assembly language assembly language to machine code machine code burned into the ROMs ROMs brought over to the breadboard and breadboard runs the program just as well as the simulators excellent a perfect uh, way to go uh, of a high level program into the crazy small CPU Okay, that's it for this uh, video. I'm not sure if there'll be any, any more videos, but if there are, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.